Hello everybody, I am Heroic Nerd, and uh, welcome back to Atlas Comics Tiger Man. Um, so, in the previous issue, we were introduced to Tiger Man, who got his powers of strength, speed, and extrasensory uh, perception through the use of tiger chromosomes, which he injected into himself. Also, he's a doctor, I think? He studies medicine, at least. He's at least training to be a doctor, I'm not sure if he was full doctor but he was in africa in last issue and they killed his sister and he got revenge and now he is a vigilante it's very interesting um it was definitely more violent than i thought it would be so let's see if this one is the same let's see we've got tiger man with man-like cunning with bestial fury we have he stalks the night and then who's this fellow who's this character down here mm. a new villain for tiger man to face off against jesus you know, I gotta tell you guys, I was going through, because I've been searching for these books for months. Once I discovered the the story of Atlas Seaboard and Martin Goodman and all that stuff, I had been searching for months for these titles, and I gotta tell you guys, I found 17 of them. 17 Atlas Comics titles. Yeah, and we're gonna go through all of them. I don't know why I'm so passionate about this. I don't know what it is that compels me to read these books, but... <laughs> they're cool. I don't know. Anyway, there's 17 of them. Some of them are just single issues, but some of them are three issues, four issues a piece. Tiger Man is three, and this is the second issue. Anyway, let's get into it. Tiger Man, stalker in a concrete jungle. That's always fun, stalking in a concrete jungle. I mean, I do that myself occasionally. Night in the city. The normally crowded streets are empty, now dark and deserted. This is New York, after all, and no one walks the streets of Manhattan after midnight. Really? I thought that was the city that never sleeps. Apparently, they've got a bedtime. No one in his right mind, that is. Ah, oh, hmm, you got me. Still, the streets are not completely deserted. In this city, as in all cities, there are men and women who exist for the twilight hours, who sleep by day and work by night. And then, ooh, what is that? Bank robbery? Look at these guys down here. It looks like a bank robbery. I mean, they're in a bank. So, some of these men are criminals. One of these men is Tiger Man. And then, of course, there's Larry Lieber presents a Jerry Conway, Steve Ditko masterwork. Yes, this was drawn by Steve Ditko. For those of you guys who know why that's important, that Steve Ditko would be working for Alice Comics at a time like this, uh, I'm not really going to explain it. If you know, you know. It's cool. It looks like his work, too. You can see it. Anyway, look, we got Tiger Man on the prowl. I'm, these guys must be bank robberies. There must be. Hey, uh, don't you think we'd better get going? I mean, with the alarm screaming and all, security will be here any minute. Let him come, Eddie. Well, now everybody knows his name is Eddie. You're not supposed to be using your real names, but that's fine. Yeah, don't tell me you're afraid of some crummy cops. Yeah, who would be afraid of crummy cops when the Tiger Man is there and he's about to fuck your ass up afraid no i'm not afraid i'm not it's just there's something spooky about the city tonight don't know what again gonna reference you back to tiger man here he's killed he's killed before and he will kill again it's just something spooky ah you're nuts eddie plain nuts all the same i think we should pack up the money and split have it your way panic boy come on we've got all we Hey, maybe we did take too long. The security guards. Oh, yeah, look back there. The security shows up. Hold it, security. Now's our chance to see if these gizmos work. When I give the word, rush them. What gizmos? What are you doing? Halter will shoot. Okay, pals, you were warned. Fire, Bill, fire. Let's see. No, it isn't possible. The bullets are bouncing off. They're wearing bulletproof vests. That's it. That has to be it. No, that's not how bulletproof vests work. It must be something else. Copper, you ain't seen nothing. Spraz, what is that, electricity? Do they have electric suits? Is that how they're beating up the cops? I mean, Tiger Man's just watching. He didn't, he didn't give a fuck. Get a load of this. Yeah, it must be something electrical, like they have electric gloves or something. Let's see. It is, look, electricity crackles, lighting the gloomy street with a blue fire, filling the air with the metallic stench of ozone, an odor strangely like the stink of brimstone, and in the present situation, equally satanic. 
What do you know? The professor's gizmos work. These two dicks are deader than last year's turkey. What? That, what? Never mind. You should congratulate yourselves, gentlemen. Huh? Ooh, look. Other men would have been satisfied with the money, but you have proven yourselves beyond other men. You're satisfied only with murder, old oh, man. Tiger Man's angry. Tiger Man gets mad. He gets mad. I noticed that about Tiger Man. What is this, Halloween? Who the? The name is Tiger Man. Remember it well, friend. Take it with you to hell. Ooh, no blood in this one, but I got a feeling like he really hurt those guys. Claws flash in the darkness, catching a stray beam of moonlight and glinting like molten silver. After a moment, all struggling ends, and the costume stranger called Tiger Man rises from the ground, turning his attention to... Hey, wait, look, please! Oh, dang, look, he ripped straight through the shirt. They mentioned a professor. Give me his name! He'd kill me! The professor would, would kill me! Yeah, well, Tiger Man's gonna fucking kill you too, buddy. And I'll kill you if you don't. Make up your mind, punk, now. Ooh, shattered his... Ooh, that's great. That's violent. I like it. I like that. I like the, I like the edge. I like the more... Con it's, there's more consequences to the action. More consequences to the violence. His name's Cobart. Professor Anderson Cobart. Teaches at Manhattan University. Uptown. Please, you won't kill me, will you? Please. There's no answer. No sound other than Eddie's ragged breathing. Slowly, he opens his eyes and gapes at the sight before him. The street is empty. Tiger Man is gone. Like Batman. Fucking gone. For a moment, Eddie Summers debates what to do. Should he run? Give himself up? A siren blasts in the distance and a police car appears down the street. Eddie Summers makes up his mind and does the only thing possible with little grace but perfect timing. He faints. Mmm, nice. I'm liking Tiger Man. That's weird. That's so weird. I completely assumed that these comic books would be dumpster fires, but they're not. They're great. Tiger Man, on the other hand, moves in a way that only Tiger Man can. Did we say only Tiger Man? Ooh, who's this fellow? Look, my prey climbs like a great cat with speed of a cougar and the strength of a lion. Ooh, it's Catman. Good Catman versus Dark Catman. But such speed and power will not save him when the Blue Leopard strikes. Yes. I am so, I'm so here for Blue Leopard. I'm, oh man, Tiger Man versus the Blue Leopard? That's, that sounds epic. I'm loving it. I'm fucking loving this. I, I love, hmm. This guy's got Arch Nemesis written all over him. Complete foil. Complete foil to the Tiger Man. Perhaps it's the soft scrape of feet against the tar paper which alerts our feline hero. Or perhaps it's a hint of motion outlined against a bloated full moon. It might even be the strange animal instincts he now possesses or some human sixth sense. Whatever it is that warns him, Tiger Man whirls to see a shadowy form leaping through the night. Oh, dude, the Blue Leopard's gonna get your ass, Tiger Man. You better watch out. And before he even quite sure know, knows what's happening, Tiger Man reacts with reflexes too sharp for any normal man. Reflexes like those of a cat. Remember, he's got them chromosomes. He's got them tiger chromosomes. Unbelievable. Whoever he is, this man is almost as agile as I am. What do you mean, almost? <laughs> Got him! The way he recovered like a cat, regaining its balance in midair, and that costume he's wearing, some sort of leopard skin. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, tiger versus leopard. You appear startled, Dr. Hill. I can see you didn't expect to encounter a man of my abilities. But you have, and now you must fight me, and if you can, survive! Something's wrong here. He knows my name, and his powers almost duplicate mine. You're right, he does know your name. I don't even know your fucking name, but he does. I've got to find out more about this character, but how do I do that without getting killed? Things are looking tough for Tiger Man. 
This is getting intense. Snarling, the self-styled blue leopard throws himself backwards, his claws sinking deep into the cloth covering the tiger man's chest, jerking our hero off balance, dragging him forward mm, and over. Straight over, another man would break his collarbone in a fall like this, but not Tiger Man. Come on, you can land it. You can land it, buddy. But in this case, you haven't noticed, Tiger Man isn't like other men. No, he is not. He is something different. And because he's something different, he lands without a scratch. Damn straight. Nabantu warned me you'd be difficult to kill, and I didn't believe him. I only half believe him now. Nabantu... Then you're from Africa, how? Oh, oh, got him. Got him straight in the chest, I think. Instinctively responding to the hot pain which lashes his stomach and chest, Tiger Man strikes out, fists smashing against face. The blue leopard reels and recovers. Nabantu said to taunt you with the truth, Dr. Hill, to play with you as the leopard plays with its victims. Very well. Listen to me, Dr. Lancaster, will listen to the voice of vengeance. For your sins against my people you will die, but you will not die here or now. You will die when I decide, and you will die painfully, as painfully as the hundreds of my people died. You, so shall you die. Hmm, hundreds of people died, apparently, and apparently Dr. Hill, Tiger Man, is responsible for this. Dr. Lancaster Hill. His name is Lancaster. Okay, Dr. Lancaster Hill. Lanny. His sister was calling him Lanny. It's short for Lancaster. Also kind of a stupid name. I've literally never heard of anybody named Lancaster before, but that's cool. That's fine. I can live with that because he's about to die anyway. All right, friend, it's my turn. You've talked a good line, but you still have a little explaining to do, and I think I'll help you make those explanations by providing some encouragement, bump. Damn, foot to the face. Knocked his ass across the room. His breath comes in short, ragged gasps, and his lungs seem almost on fire. Tiger Man staggers as he regains his feet and wonders why so suddenly he feels weak. Has he been poisoned? Weaker than he's ever felt before. Oh my god, he's been poisoned. Drugged. Your claws. A drug on your claws. Oh my god, what a twist. What a twist. That's right, Dr. Hill. Or as you call yourself now, Tiger Man. Nabantu prepared a potion for my claws. This time it acts merely to put you asleep. Next time the amount will be increased. And it will kill you. The leopard's voice echoes oddly like a sound heard through water or a voice speaking in the distance. Tiger Man feels a strange warmth flooding through him, through his stomach, through his neck, and into his face. It almost a pleasant sensation while it lasts. Abruptly... He feels nothing. He drops down into darkness. And then the darkness he dreams. It's a bizarre dream filled with conflicting images. An African game reserve. An Indian tiger running wild. And a man, Dr. Lancaster Hill. A dedicated young doctor with the Peace Corps. That was it. He was in Africa for the Peace Corps. Working in African Zambia to help in his own way to relieve the troubles of the world. His interest in animal instincts led him to experiment with a tiger shipped to the medical center from India. He wasn't sure what he was looking for, but he knew when he'd found it. Rather than risk another man's life, he used himself as a guinea pig for the serum he'd isolated. With a jealous, When a jealous witch doctor released the tiger, hoping to blame Dr. Hill for any deaths caused by the beast's rampage, Dr. Hill found himself battling the giant cat. And transformed by the serum he'd taken, beating the tiger in a struggle to the death. Yes, this is everything that happened in the last issue. How much like a dream that all seems like, like a nightmare. Not really, but it is reality, dark reality. And though it comes back to him now as a dream, he knows in his soul that this particular dream will never end. Daylight? Ooh, he slept through all the night. That drug must have kept me sleeping for hours and still I feel groggy like there's a pound of cotton stuffed between my ears. The sun's almost overhead. It must be. Noon? Holy shit, dude, you gotta get somewhere. You gotta get the fuck out of that tiger costume, I'll tell you that much. My god, I've got a 12 o'clock call at the hospital. I'll never make it uptown in time unless you use your special tiger powers. 
Look up, New York. Here's a sight that doesn't come along every day. After all, how many tiger men are there in a city of 9 million people? Just one. There's 9 million people in New York? Jesus Christ. The city I live in has, like, less than 1 million. And it's a major metropolitan city I live in. Anyway, I like that. I like how when he he has, like, tiger. He has, like, tiger looking. It's very cool. Very tiger man. All right. The Harlem Hospital. Oops. Okay. He switches back to his doctor form. Len, there you are. Oh, hello. I didn't know we were sharing this shift today. We wouldn't be if Carol Roper hadn't called in sick. Where have you been, Lan? Dr. McCauley has been looking everywhere for you. I was afraid of that. Frankly, uh, I've been having trouble sleeping lately. Sleeping? Are you serious? No, not with that drugged serum you didn't have no trouble sleeping, sir. It's not a joke. I can't get to sleep, and when I finally do... Nightmares. I find it almost impossible to wake up when I want to. I can't believe you're telling me this. You're not pulling my leg, are you? Yeah, I can't believe it either. Would I lie about something as stupid as that? Well, don't answer. Yeah, you're an idiot, dude. You're a total idiot. Hold on, give me one second. There we go. So it goes. A day much like many other days before it and doubtless like many days to come. Rounds are made, charts are checked, patients are treated with tender, loving care. But through it all, Dr. Hill finds himself slightly distracted, doctor? Yeah, distra that's what I was going to say. Hmm, did you say something, Mrs. Atwick? I said you seem distracted. Problems at home, doctor? Are you married? Well, no, not quite. I'm sorry if my behavior has disturbed you. At my age and my condition, nothing disturbs me anymore. You take care of yourself, Dr. Hill. A young boy like you shouldn't be left shouldn't let life upset him so. A smile of thanks, a murmured good evening, and she's right. I have been walking through today in a fog, and I know why. Because the fucking leopard kicked your ass last night, bro. It's because I haven't resolved either this madness with that leopard character, or my interest in the actions of Dr. Anderson Cobart. My duty tour is over, but Tiger Man's tour is just about to begin. Soon, a lithe figure moves unseen along the shadowed rooftops of Upper Broadway, darting suddenly from rooftop to, tr rooftop to truck stop. Hitching a ride in a most peculiar way. Something else that old woman said still bothers me about how I shouldn't let life upset me. Do I let life upset me? Is that the reason I became Tiger Man? Yeah, that's totally it, dude. You get angry pretty, pretty fast, man. You're a very passionate guy. I think that's common among superheroes, but still. Out of frustration with life. After all, it was my sister's death which made me decide... A on a career of fighting evil. Could I have been so distraught by her killing? Well, that's pretty normal. I mean, it's an emotional thing. I don't blame you. That I've been fighting reality by avenging her again and again? Hell, I don't know. My specialty is a physical medicine, not psychiatry. Which raises another question. If I'm a man of medicine, a healer, what on earth am I doing killing people? Again, I just don't know. All I do know is... I've got no other choice. According to the information I dug up during my lunch break at the hospital, Cobart has his office here, which means I go in... Mm. Sorry. Which means I go in the hard way. What? Professor Cobart dead? Very dead, Dr. Hill. Oh man, is this going to be a cliffhanger? With all the evidence pointing directly to you, Tiger Man. Tiger Man doesn't speak, but the hate glaring in his eyes says volumes. Yeah, he does. He's filled with hatred, man. He's got to work on that, or else it's going to be his downfall. Actually, I suppose you should thank me for saving you the trouble. That's why you've come here, isn't it? To kill him? I overheard your dialogue with Cobart's henchman last night, of course. Which is why I thought you'd provide... To provide you with this small present. Something which to complicate your furtive little life. You have ten seconds, Leopard. Ten seconds to explain before I kill you. Good, I want an explanation. I want to know what the fuck is going on here. The explanation is simple enough, Dr. Hill. I am here to claim vengeance. Navantu, witch doctor of our village in Zambia, 
Set me to exact retribution for the deaths your sorcery caused. The deaths of starvation of over 200 of my tribe, which began only a month after you left our country. Nabantu said you were responsible. You and your white witchery. Mm. He cast a spell over me, increasing my strength threefold, making me your equal and more. I was given the skin of the sacred leopard to wear a ceremonial dress similar to your own. Then I was sent here to America while I was to find you, humiliate you, and then take final revenge. Black got him straight in the face. He's forgotten my own powers. I sensed that leap before it came, which gives me time to sidestep and follow up with a punch. His hand moving too quickly. I've got to avoid his claws or... Or what? He's going to poison you again, you fucking idiot. Slithering more like a snake than a cat, the blue leopard twists... Swings himself around and lands on top of Tiger Man. His claws scant inches from Tiger Man's face. All I have to do is touch you and it's over. That's the key word, Leopard. You have to touch and that's one thing I won't let you do. Shadows dart wildly as the Blue Leopard flips in midair, regaining his feet almost before he lost them. The sleek African lands his body already tensing to attack once more when... Sirens! No, come on! Resolution, please. I'll leave you to the police, Dr. Hill. For now, you can stay and attempt an explanation for Cobart's death, or you can run and make yourself a fugitive. Hold it! You aren't going anywhere, mister! Aren't I? Tonight was just a dry run, Dr. Hill. There are things you still have to learn about me, and learn them you will before you die. Oddly accented laughter drips up from the darkened campus, reaching the depths of Tiger Man's soul. Where new forces are fusing unknown to Lanny Hill, and for the moment unheeded. The leopard killed Cobart just to annoy me. A man died to suit another man's whim. My god, I was going to kill Cobart myself, and if I had, what difference would there have been between the leopard and me? And in the name of heaven, where does the hero end and the madman begin? An important question, Tiger Man. A sure indication that despite appearances, this is anything but the end. No, it's not. It is not the end. We still have one more issue to go through. And I really hope that that issue resolves this storyline. Because I'm starting to really feel for Tiger Man. He's very grief-stricken, very passionate. He's angry and full of power. And it's sort of compelling as a character. I'm not hating it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Is is Tiger Man, is Tiger Man ringing your bells or no? But uh, anyway, that's it for this episode. If you liked reading this comic with me and you want to read more comics with me, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, and if you are feeling so obliged, uh, you can donate to my Patreon, which helps me make even more videos. But until next time, uh, nerds, stay heroic.